think that everybody's pretty much there ready to go. Excellent. Thank you very much for arriving today, for coming to this uh, talk. Uh, before we start, hi everybody, whoever can see me. Uh, before we start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of which Naira stands. Um, so we acknowledge the Bidjigal and Gadigal people of the Yura Nation, and we pay our respects to elders past and present. And imagine that you are from different parts in the country, I cannot say that exactly. But um, yeah, today I'm here at Naira, in my office actually. Um, it's a place probably if you, you know, coming around, I would like to bring you in and from here, take you in a tour to our installation. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, I will take you through a, a 15 minute presentation, probably a bit shorter. So hopefully you have some questions in the end. And briefly uh, explain to you the sort of projects that you will be doing here um, if you apply to NIDA or if you undertake this course, the Bachelor of Properties and Objects. Um, it is a three years course, as you all know. Um, so it is a, it's a good um, amount of time for you to develop your skills and become you know, um, the sort of maker or designer, designer maker or artist that you would like to be, hopefully. That's our idea. So I'm gonna share a PowerPoint. I'm gonna get you through, um, through the different um, projects. All the work that you will see is our student work. It's from previous years, and some of them are for the current year. Um, so let me start with that. Um, again, um, it's good to present. So yeah, I can you all see sounds up again, please? Just ensuring that you can see the PowerPoint. Great. Um, I'm just gonna put you a different bit here. Great, excellent. Um, but yeah, let's start here. So, so welcome to the Properties and Object Bachelor of Arts here at NIDA. My name is Marcelo Zavala Baeza. Marcelo is long enough, I believe. Um, I've been working here for the last, um, since 2011 actually. Um, and now I run this course um, with uh, Alexia and Mayela. Um, that's our uh, in-house team. But so take, let me take you through some of the projects. So what you see here is a set of portrait as we call this project. Um, so a, a lot of the learning that we do here at NIDA through this course is project-based. So it is um, it's applying this theory, uh, but the, the practice is leading that theory of understanding uh, new skills. So in this case, the idea is that you create a portrait. So you learn scenic techniques, painting basically techniques that can be useful for theater and for many other practices um, as well. Um, but um, we know only starting here with the idea of you painting, um, firstly, you, not, you need to create that composition, that image that you're gonna paint. So this is something that we've been exploring for the last years. So when the students start to make their own composition, so the image that you see here on the left, this one here, that's the current work that a student will be, be painting very soon. Uh, of course, we went through this pandemic, so we'd be learning online, um, and the project was that they prepared this image. So when we come back to NIDA next semester, they could, Paint it and make it, you know, a larger scale. When I mean larger scale, this portrait will be around 1.8 by 1.5 meters big. So it's quite a massive uh, canvas that you make. Um, we give you the timber. You you do the whole thing basically. Select the image, work with your own learn the skills in digital graphics, um, and then the yes, scene is painted. So for each one of these uh, components, you have a, a tutor and a mentor that will help you in that process. Um, the next project that we have um, is related to the sculptural skills. Um, as a maker, um, a lot of you like to sculpt, you know, by hand with tools, with many things. So we think that is a, a fundamental skill to have. Um, but we always um, we are here neither, so we have to create narrative with what we do. So we explore the idea of the myth here. You find in your own myth, and from there creatures will emerge. So, um, so yeah, it's a very interesting project. Is to launch in this idea of exploring the form and creation of your know, creatures. Um, another project that we do in first year too um, is objects and stories, we call it at the moment. Um, from our point of view, objects build narrative. Um, objects tell us stories, they can create context. Um, so um, to do this, we ask our students to, to find different objects and create a narrative with them, create a story behind. Um, um, but 
to learn to do these processes in terms of making the object, we teach them, uh, we introduce them to good work skill, metal work skill, polymer skill, and scenic textures skills. When I mean scenic textures, um, it's different to painting a portrait or an image, it's basically recreating um, textural, architectural textures such, such as brick, um, concrete, you know, rust, um, iron, all those textures that you will find in architecture. Um, and then they create a space um, and the objects that will tell us a, a narrative, a story, um, applying those techniques. Another thing that we do too, and this is a project that takes a bit longer. Um, this is called the furniture project. Um, so to start with this, we firstly, um, we basic base this on an existing chair. Um, from there, we introduce you to 3D modeling, drafting skills, 3D rendering skills as well. So you can visualize this in 3D firstly and create plans. And with that information, we ask you to create a model, a small maquette model. So these chairs that you see here, they want to fight typically. Actually, I have some of them here next to me in my office. I collect them as you can see them. Um, so for example, I have this replica of chair. This is one of my favorite. So we call it the white models because here you're exploring form, you see. And from there, hopefully you understand the contractive processes that lead you to create a larger scale one. So yeah, I could keep going. I have many, many of them. Look at this beauty here. It's fantastic. And as you can see as well, this, this is a very classic design that have to be transformed into a rocking chair. So that was makes it quite a delicate piece to contract. So the student did really well. So this is a project about objects again uh, and replicating objects. Um, this sort of thing is very useful in theater, film, television, um, recreating sets, set dressing, uh, in many, many skills. And in general, you know, just my furniture and to know how to fix furniture is quite a good skill. Um, so, but yeah, model making help us to explore those ideas before we commit and contract the largest one, the big ones. Um, so, um, of course, to, to do this at the scale, we need to teach you extra techniques or introduce you to other techniques such as joinery or upholstery in case you need to, the chair that you develop in need these skills. Um, so yeah, so it's a long-term project, you know, it's, it's progressive. It's from understanding form, developing in 3D, then getting to the larger, to the physical and then to the larger form um, and then realizing it. Um, this is another project that we do here as well. As you know, it's very important for us to um, create a character. Um, it's one of the elements in narrative. And, and pr probably all of you would like to be dressed up as warriors sometime. So of course we have a project based on that idea. Uh, it's quite movie inspired, you know, those warriors um, that you see in movies with these type of armors, a quite complex project. So this is a group project. It's not something that you will be doing by yourself. It's just too, too much. Uh, but that's one of the main things that we do here at NIDA uh, is collaborate, you know, collaborate between our course, but as well with other courses. Um, so this one is particular within our course and sometimes of course people from costume, you know, come and collaborate with us too. But in here we'll show you techniques uh, for molding and casting, leather work, pattern making, digital model, modeling, digital fabrication. So all of those techniques um, and any other techniques you have learned, you know, you applied in this project. So we're not only focusing on the techniques that you um, we teach you per project, but as well, you always carry what you bring, even from what you previous experience, as a way of finding new ways of making scene and experimenting in this context. So in here, you see two samples um, of leather work in particular, one of course the Romans and the, um, the Samurais. Um, um, so I, as I mentioned to you, start with a, previously with a, a project in a sculpture, um, but as the, 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 um, that project was based in a myth, that, that myth belonged to a culture. So we would like you to explore that culture in depth and try to extrapolate other objects that might exist with these, these cultures where those myths are inspired from. And then we will ask you to, to present your final sculpture, the largest scale one, but as well as dress with objects around to create this, this image of the myth that you want to imagine in a more complex manner. Of course, we're talking about a, a second year sort of project, a lot more complex, um, because you know your sculpture will be quite large, um, and then how you realize that and present this um, to the public here in Naira is something that 
you will experience many, many times, actually. We always ask you to get your prayers out there and show it to your peace and to the rest of the community here at NIDA. Um, and this day, you know, to an international community by using websites or videos online and just always trying to reach out and show your work as much as you can. Um, to get here to samples of us as cultures when it, they previous work from maybe three, four years ago. Um, so the next um, project or sort of techniques that we will show you is architectural modeling. Um, this again is a group project. Um, and the idea is to apply those, all these other techniques in digital fabrication and, and scenic, but in miniature. So before, you know, you were making these bigger sculptures, now we completely flip the coin and we ask you to focus in small things and create, you know, this narrative but to scale. So yeah, the student create these different models. Um, it's always a group project, as you can see in the bottom. I don't know how many are from Sydney, uh, but basically the, the bottom um, model uh, is from Newtown. So the students all went to Newtown and this pick up building, the photograph, and tried to reproduce the building. Actually, I still have those, um, some of those models here next to me. I'm just gonna show you two, the actual scene. Um, you see? So it's, that's what you can see. I collect them too. They're beautiful. So in here we focus in the facade, it's frontal work. Um, what we're doing with this process is try to get you to, um, to then focus in a, a next model, which is a mill, a film that you will be making. So then you create your own um, a short film uh, in collaboration with writers, where you can develop your own model um, of your own you know, choice. And then you will shoot this model and create um, a short film, you know, around five minutes. Um, if you visit the, the NIDA website and the property object page, you will find a lot of these actual films that the student created. So if you feel like a, a movie afternoon, please, this more than four hours of films since 2011. It's a beautiful collection of um, yeah, model films. Um, then um, another project that we in introducing this, um, which is, an, is a natural thing that our students do is practical effects. You know, we always like to break things up and then re put it together and then break them again, or make things fly or explode or those things that happen in theater or film and television. So practical effects is more those mechanical effects more than those video or uh, more image editing base. So this, for example, is, um, is a table, you know, it's a quite long table that we have to build for a show last year. But in the climax of the show, this table have to be broken. Uh, of course, it's a show that we repeat every day. So we have to find ways of creating objects that can be resembled and then broken and resemble again. So, so every night we have this collapse of glass and things that we have to rebuild every day. That took seven days. But if you observe behind that too, look at the chairs, the chairs as well. It's because they're smaller objects, you can know, see it clearly, but actually, as the show was progressing, each one of these chairs was get falling apart, small components. So the whole world was getting uh, disintegrated through the, the idea of these mechanical practical effects that our students explore during you know, um, the requirements for the show. So we made the, it's, it's almost like saying doing magic somehow. That's the idea, you know, sometimes object levitate or you name it. Depends what your ideas will. Uh, what, what ideas you have, actually. Um, then uh, um, we flip the coin again, um, but it's still talking about performance, you know, and mass making, of course, is a, is a classic scene in theater, film, television, and in parties, you know, we all like to have masks on um, and have fun. So basically, yeah, we sh show you different technique of mass making, and in here you can see samples of um, leather masks. Um, again, it's very nice and um, friendly with the body. So of course, leather is one of the main materials that we use for mass, but as well, we can do mass in different different sorts. Um, so in here, you can see sample of uh, other mass, of course, on the right. And in the other side, you see prosthetic, this hand that looks um, quite damaged. It's all made out of um, silicones, really. And it's all fake, uh, as you can see there. But it's something that our students have to learn, sometimes to this level of complexity, or sometimes to a level of, you know, scratches in the faces, things like that, damage of limbs, whatever you, you, you might need to do for a movie, a play. So yeah, we, we practice this technique, we teach our students these techniques. Uh, in, in isolation, firstly, we introduce them, but in the end of the day, these techniques are pointing to create a performatic event. That's always what we would like to do. 
So then we, we start to uh, focus in puppet making with these techniques. As you can see here, there are three samples, very different contraction techniques of puppets. Um, later on, when you, if you stay for the Q&A, uh, you can ask more about puppets, actually, because some of the students in there are really good puppet makers and have done a lot of work um, on puppetry lately, too. But in here, three clear samples of very different contractions of puppet. This one is more like a Muppet, as you can see here. Um, yeah, so your hand inside and then you use the classic one. The other one is a different style here, it's more control. So basically you have inside the head control that allows you to move the mouse and do other sort of function. Uh, it's more like, like this type of puppeteering where you, you have something to point around, that's your puppet. And then you just press the, the trigger basically and the puppet does some movement. And then you control the arms with this um, different stick here. So it's a different type of contraction. Or, or then you have this one, again, it's quite creative way of contracting these puppets, as you can see. Uh, a completely different technique, again. Uh, it's, it's a good in puppets, have a really nice way, so you can you know, have this um, relationship with the object, and the objects sort of guide you in that performance as well. Um, and here, as you can see, the final um, um, presentation, of course, as we ask you to perform these events. Um, yeah, you're neither. So of course, it's, you not only make the object, sometimes you have to be the performance. So in here's a good sample as the student applied, um, you know, makeups, costumes, the masks that we asked them to do, and then the puppets. Well, in here you don't see the puppet, but as well they created puppet for this show and then perform this show here to the NIDA community a couple of times. But lately we've been collaborating with other companies um, and um, in the industry of the arts. One of them is uh, Phoenix Central Park. So I will encourage you to just tap in, in YouTube or you can go through our website as well. Um, and type in my sister is a Martian, Phoenix Central. Um, they, um, and we collaborate with them. So we performed this show here called My Sister is a Martian. But as well, we presented out there um, with, in, in their venue and they produced a very nice video for you to look. So if you have kids of um, you know, the little ones that you would like to show at uh, 20 minutes, um, presentation of Papa Show is a very nice, I believe, show to, to show them and have uh, fun. So this project is again is a collaboration with a student from um, a technical theater and state management. You know they help us with the light, with the sound. It's, it's part within our project, but I'll always our students collaborate and reach out to other students around. Um, for example, all some of the voices for these puppets were done by the actors, you know, so we collaborate with them, they come, they do all the, all the shooting, our students put it in, 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 in queues, and then the choice perform and can be taken to different places that way. Um, so yeah, that's typically this project is by the end of second year. Um, it's one of you later collaboration, and then you do your master work, that will be third year. Um, so yeah, again, the master work is a project that the student is driven completely by the students. It's not something that we tell the student what they need to do. It's, it's completely up to them to develop this project. Um, in this case, you can see an assassin and then a, an orc. Um, so in, in, in the orc, in, in both of them, you can see so many techniques applied, you know, from sculpting to eye making, chain mail, leather work, you know, metal work. It's, it's just incredible. But that's, that's your project, that's something that you drive completely. Um, and then here's another two master works that you can see here, a student actually, Alexi, that will be doing the Q&A later, he produced that mask. He doesn't look like that at all. He's just a mask of an old man um, that he did. Um, but it's a fantastic project because again, it does all uh, a massive protective that you put on. I did put it on once for a, for a performance, for a talk, and it was quite amazing to see myself uh, so old and you know still moving and talking and speaking. Uh, and the other one is another ex student that um, did an alien um, small, and she has a video online too as well if you would like to, to see it. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of, of work, but um, this is what you do within the course itself. Um, but then as well, um, we do collaborations with others, um, with other uh, departments as I said to you, the productions were, oh, sorry, went too fit fast there. So in this case, we have to build these massive puppets. Um, again, Indy, that uh, is, is, will be here for the talk, she helped, she came up after she finished NIDA, she came back and helped us to make this puppet. Um, and it was a great exercise for all our students to get to work in a you know, one to one scale puppet. Uh, as you can see here in performance, it's outside my office here any day, if you want to come around, I can show it to you. Actually, it's a lot of 3D printing and um, 
a 3D scanning a lot of digital technologies to make this puppet. Um, so yeah, fantastic. You can see the, the feet, the hand, they're quite realistic. But yeah, they, really good work for us there. Very interesting. Oh, in this case, we have to build this massive couch that you see in the background and it have to spin around. And then the table in the middle have to spin itself. Again, this is a sort of work that we might have to do for production or even as well, you know, a little duck, as you can see here, there's a painting at the back. There is all this thing that we have to find and fix. It's just, you name it, it's all sort of things. Um, um, so as you can see in here, some of the places that you potentially will work when you finish. Um, this is just within Sydney here, but a lot of our alumni have worked in Opera Australia, Sydney Theatre Company, of course, in Belvoir, um, Theatre. So yeah, we, we are interconnected with these companies. Of course, they know we know each other and a lot of the uh, alumni is still working in there. Um, but then it's not only theater, um, it's got, as well, a lot of our students go and do events. Um, so for example, uh, Pink Cactus Props, this is a company uh, of two alumni from this course that, you know, they have their own business now building these beautiful uh, large scale sculptures and all sort of projects actually related to making and art and big objects, sculptures. And then um, Airs, it's another Sydney based company that does these beautiful monsters and large scale puppets and dinosaurs in particular. And again, they always employ uh, students um, or sometimes the placement that you do in your last year when you have to go and work in a company for a couple of months, um, they very welcoming. Um, and then of course the movies, you know, our students, um, just three of the latest one just to show there, but a lot of our students always get to work in these projects. Um, you know, um, the industry, we are very close to Fox Studios as well, but Aquaman, for example, was shot in Queensland, so I know a lot of people that went travel and moved to Queensland during that time. Um, and then again, international project. This is Katie. She's been working in puppeteering and animation for since she left Naira. Actually, she went to do her placement in 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 England, and then you know she stayed there and she worked in this movie. Oh, Rowan, another case. Again, I'm an alumni that went to Europe after he finished and stayed to work there. And this is probably his proudest moment when he, he went to and worked for this company uh, actually making the, the suit for the march. That's the sort of project that we like you to, to try to do, you know, that's the skill that we set you up to. So you feel confident to take bigger, a larger project in a collaborative environment. Um, so yeah, look, just to finish, it's a few of the classic things. You will find all this information uh, online. Um, if you would like to apply or any question, please feel free to, to approach us. We're very happy to, to talk to you at any time. Um, as I said to you, yeah, more of the information you can find it or send us an email, ask for it, please. Um, here's a bit of the tuition fees as well. So I know it's scaring you, as you can see, this is what is at the moment. Um, but again, all this information, you can find it in our website or send us an email. We can send you the link. Please do let us know. Um, and then, yeah, thank you very much for coming today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and, and now I hope that you can stay and, and be part of the Q&A session and the conversation that we will have for, with a couple of alumni and Alexi and, and the tutors, other tutors from the course too. Um, so yeah, I'd, I will leave Alexi now to, to follow up. I mean, after you have some questions, he will continue. But I would like to know if there is any any question or anything that you would like to to ask me. I actually received a few questions here in the chat. Um, there is one from Melissa. She's asking about the lines for the assessment. Deadlines. Um, basically, yeah, of course there are those lines that we have to 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 match. Uh, like how much, typically a lot of these projects work in parallel. So put it this way, um, when you are making something, you might be designing something else. So it's a lot of overlapping, you know? So let's say when you work in productions in the afternoon, in the morning, you might be finishing the, the costume project. Um, so yeah, it's overlapping of work. It's not as linear. Uh, so typically you start with a research process, then you develop your idea, then you start to do experiments, um, by the time you start to experiment, you're getting ready to make these things. At that time, we put you the next idea in. So you can start to think about the next one as you make to, and it's, it's this idea of um, 
agility of mind and you're always flipping from prey to prey and being able to you know which is more realistic in your professional life you know you have a conversation about one thing in the morning in the afternoon is completely different prey you need to have that conversation and be able to switch your mind um so yeah that's how typically we um uh, put together you know the order of projects um, um what do you want in the portfolio what I do, I think the portfolio I need to reflect is is the work that you have done and your interests and 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 your potential. Um, I, as you can see, um, is the portfolio is only one part of of, of what you present in the end of the day. You know, is is uh, a pivoting point to discuss ideas. I think that if you think of the portfolio as that, as some sort of window into your world, into your ideas. And then from there you explain to us what it is. That's something that I really appreciate. We're not looking for people that have, you know, the best portfolio ever. A lot of you are young, you're getting in to learn these things, but it's the potential. I, well, that's why we try to read, you know, what you can become. And if you can articulate, you know, why you want to do this sort of course and what you want to do in the future, that's very important for me to see. It's not about, you know, I want to work in a movie. It's, it's you know, what you want to learn as a bigger picture and, and what you to become as a person. I think that's it's something important, you know, to consider because it's a, it's a life choice. You know, when you do this sort of courses, you're expecting, not necessarily, but you have an aim of become, you know, a professional in this area and keep working pretty much in the rest of your life in some related media you know so it's, it's a it's a very important decision hmm. um taking a gig up doing some work experience yeah look any experience of course is welcome any experience welcome as i said to you um if you want to go out there and learn things of course i would say learn how to make things in any area in the end of the day when you are practicing is the agility of mind i was saying you know problem solving skills and they come from any angle you know Let's put it this way. Sometimes we have projects that um, the only material we might give you is paper and we ask you to do something really strong and hard. It's what you do out of what you have, really, this, this power of seeing potential in, in the material that you have around you. Then, of course, we bombard you with techniques, you know. But um, it, the techniques by themselves don't do anything if you don't know what, how you want to apply them or how you want to combine them with each other, you know, and that's when your creativity and your experimentation came across by always trying something new and see what happened. Mm -hmm. um, I just look in here at the question is because of the unit shake up by the coalition. Um, look, at the moment, I cannot answer. It's a very, very interesting question about if it will have impact. Um, at the moment, this is Look, I, I know I couldn't answer that to tell you true because um, of, of course it's a different thing, but my understanding that the, the coalition was talking about the um, very specific um, social science areas and we are more in the arts, so I'm not sure. And it, this announcement was just yesterday, I believe. Um, so yeah, I could not, but probably something that we will keep trying to pin down later. Um, but you can see that was the feast that we mentioned. Uh, any question? How many people do we accept? That's a very important question. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Darren. The, um, <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's six students that we undertake per year. Um, again, it's a tailored education. You see, we, we like to spend a lot of time with our students. It's very different to other courses when you, you know, get a lecture and then if you like, you get three minutes with a tutor on the phone here and there, if. No, this is a lot more close. We we talk to you every day, pretty much. We will see you around. You could come knock the door. You know, um, ideas come out of the blue, and we want to discuss those ideas. So, of course, there are classes. You know, it's not like crazy. Everybody comes into whatever. It's a class. It's the time when you have time with your tutors. But within that, is a lot of time to experiment. And your tutor Mayela and Alexi, that you see them in the screen, they're always around. We're always around here to talk and that's only us then you have people you know in costume in set contraction in design all these amazing wealth of knowledge of people willing to share and on top of that you have the students you know 
from all causes experimenting and doing things. So it's a really rich environment. So for us, six is a key number to give you that really, you know, in-depth experience. Hmm. Um, are students required to, to theoretical work such as an assignment? Yes, you are actually. The course, what I show you here today is the is the is the structure of the within the props and object department. Parallel to that, there are in the first two years. Um, another couple of subjects that you have to do, which about um, are the theories and the ideas related to performance and storytelling. Uh, and within that um, as well, there are uh, another subject that is about collaboration. So basically we put you together in teams of in uh, different cohorts. So you develop your own projects. But before you do that, you have to present pitches, you know, develop ideas so that could be considered assignments. Um, and of course, you know, in, in terms of what you do for our course, um, it's not only made things, um, as well as managing how to make things. So for us, it's important that you learn, you know, how to do schedules, how to do budgets, how to organize professionally your days. And, you know, and that's the way that we believe you can undertake many projects at once because you need to be um, able to, to, to yeah, manage project management. So that's very important for us. In, in particular in Sergia, you become a prop supervisor of these larger scale shows, and then you have to manage you know, a student from first years and shows basically on your own. Of course, supported by us, but it's, it's, it's really you managing shows. Mm. Um, I think that I have answered most of the questions. Of course, in making prop for acting students versus doing solo work. You know, it's a lot of collaboration. Um, I could say that it's around 50-50 that you work in productions a lot. Um, and yeah, no, it's, it's a lot with the actors and with different cohorts. So for example, if you need to, if we are required to do a, a helmet, we might need to go meet the actors, measure the head and ensure that it fit properly. It's not gonna be too heavy or whatever is required. It's a lot of collaboration, definitely. Um, is there more questions? When the absolute student can receive credit for previous uni study or history. Uh, look, there's one more question here from Monique about uh, credit, um, our history. I don't believe so that will be the case. Um, that is prior recognition. Um, yeah, so I cannot 100% answer that, but in my understanding, that is not the case that that particular subject will be recognized. Um, look, I think that I have answered most of the questions. Um, so, um, as I said to you, Alexi will stay now with Mayela and with Indy and a couple of nights discussing a few of the things and the, the professional life, you know, how they're doing there and, and you're welcome, please, to stay and be part of that conversation. So I let Alexi now to continue um, and feel free to send an email, a message, anything, I can call you back and if you want to discuss in depth a bit more things. Uh, NIDA is opening as well next semester, you know, after this pandemic. So probably if you want to come around and organize the time, I think that I could help you to do that too. So please, thank you very much for coming today. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks very much, Marcel. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and thank you all. Um, so my name is Alexi, um, uh, and this is Mayela next to me. Um, we're the co-heads uh, of props uh, here at NIDA. Um, we're just going to be doing a quick uh, Q&A session with some of our alumni um, from uh, years past. So we have um, two alumni here, um, Indigo and uh, Courtney Clark, uh, are going to be answering some questions. Um, uh, I also did the um, NIDA course. Uh, I graduated uh, about four years ago, five years ago. Um, so I can answer uh, alumni questions as well. Um, and so if you want to just Put them in the chat or if you'd like to turn your microphone on and talk through the camera uh, either or um, we're open to all kinds of questions so um uh we're just going to get things started by just sort of uh introducing um uh indigo and courtney sort of just asking them what they've been up to so uh, uh indy how are you going hey um i'm good <laughs> that's good uh, that's nice to see you uh in the camera there it's been yeah. a while. um just uh, do you want to just tell us about like so when when you graduated like how many years ago and like maybe it's like a quick synopsis of some of the projects you've worked on since uh, finishing NIDA? Cool. Um, yeah. So I graduated like 2017, so that's like what two and a half years ago or so. Yeah. And um, I've done quite a lot of stuff in that time. The first year was 
lots of just crazy freelancing, lots of like short jobs. I worked, I did um, my placement with Courtney uh, at Creature Technology, which, you know, they did working with, walking with dinosaurs. I'm sure she'll talk about that. Yeah, there's um, those massive dinosaur puppets. Yeah, um, big, so. Yeah. <laughs> those things are huge. Yeah, like lots of puppetry stuff. Um, I worked with Earth and I worked on some of those projects that Marcelo was showing in the slideshow. And um, since I've done a lot of indie theater, um, like Storm Boy and some other stuff. And then recently I've moved into more film stuff. Mm. So uh, lots of like- From what I understood, um, a lot of your career sort of got kickstarted with um, the puppetry um, scene. So you've sort of spoken about Creature Tech, Earth, um, Storm Boy, it's all puppet related projects um, that you specialized in. Um, so, and was that, um, was that interest generated from being at NIDA or was that yeah. sort of something that you were, so it was, it was all, all NIDA and all the experience and knowledge that you got um, initially was, was from this NIDA puppetry project. Um, yeah, well, I think um, as, as most people to the area, like your interest starts before that, but it was definitely like, you know, the kind of movies you want to watch and stuff with all the creatures, you know, they're really cool and watching the behind the scenes and things. Um, but uh, definitely like a merging of like lots of animals and kind of forms and movement. And I think once we did that at NIDA a bit, that was really cool. And I decided to pursue that for my master work. Mm. Um, so, and that's kind of how I got into all of that, being a little bit performative and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. And you've uh, incorporated a lot of different technologies into your puppets from what I understood. You were using the laser cutter to produce some puppets uh, recently, as well as more sculptural forms as well, um, using mold making techniques. So really yeah, there's lots of, I mean, because puppetry is kind of like creme de la creme of props because it's literally all of it, right? It's like a little bit of everything and you can, you can come from any angle. You could go like fully marionette hand carved, or you could go fully laser cutted, 3D printed, or animatronic, like electronic, yeah. whatever. Just it's kind of everything. Right. And you can incorporate mechanisms in there, and it sort of can be as artsy or stylized as you as you want it. It is, yeah, it is a bit of the holy grail for um, <laughs> makers, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. it's quite the coveted uh, industry to be in. So um, yeah, it's just amazing that you've um, gotten into that. Um, we'll come back to you in a second. I just wanted to introduce Courtney as well. Um, Hello. <laughs> working, you've been doing global creatures uh, as well, from what I understand. For uh, uh, yeah, I did a creature technology company. I did so in third year required to do a placement and I did lots and one of them happened to be at Creature Tech. And so I finished up there and kind of was just like, I'll be back. And then I've been working there uh, since I finished. So from 2017 until now. Well, that's a, it's just a good long stint as well, which is it's a, yeah, it's a long stint, <laughs> yeah, which is great. Like it's amazing that you've had um, consistent employment since graduating. Um, and so uh, I understand that you can't tell us too much about the work that you've done at CTC, but um, yeah, <laughs> uh, you can mention like some techniques that you learned uh, from NIDA that have helped you get access to that industry or. Um, I uh, definitely think from NIDA, it's a lot of, um, I made, I made notes. <laughs> it's a lot of um, problem solving skills and it's really about collaboration as well because at NIDA you learn to talk to different people from different places, different backgrounds. We always called it like we could speak designer or director to like communicate with a bunch of people. But practically it's, it's a lot of pattern making and sewing and it's like large scale sculptures essentially. So it's just getting your mind around all of that, which was very helpful and beneficial when we did the um, the the sculpting project, the polysculpt project, because you're going from something this big to like huge, and it's like mm. working all that out and everything. Gave you a little taste of it beforehand. Yeah. No, it, it's a good point that you've raised there. Like, I enjoyed the fact that um, when you were doing the course, you kind of got exposed to different scales of objects. You know, like from the miniatures that you do for model for film up to the giant polysculpting projects. Um, the, the tools that are employed, the processes that are employed, even the tolerances that you have to employ when working with these different materials, it really helps you just get your head around these different um, scales and different sort of avenues for creating objects. Um, and so obviously that's helped you immensely in getting into a CTC, so you've gone pattern making, but um, you also have like a, um, and uh, personal art practice as well, from what I understand. Um, I do, I, I, yeah. I dabble. <laughs> dabble. <laughs> and because the, the, did the painting start when you came to NIDA in the first year when we did that? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. 
initially beforehand, I didn't like painting at all. Like it was just, it wasn't my thing. And then we did the big portrait sculpture, uh, portrait painting, and it just kind of exploded from there. And I oh. go in acrylic, I'm in digital now. And just, it's kind of my, my downtime. Cause it is hard when you have a creative job to do it like at, at the same time, like your own thing. Behind you, this there, Courtney? Yes. Yeah. Otherwise it'd be just a white <laughs> wall behind me. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's a way I relax and kind of chill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's just so amazing. Yeah. Uh, and like you find that a lot of people that come here um, have, uh, you know, creative practices in their um in their personal life as a, as a hobby or as a downtime activity and that's how they sort of decide to try and make that into a professional um career there um i thought i'd quickly talk about something that um some stuff that i did after finishing nida so um graduated in 2015 um and went over to uh work at weta workshop um where they did lord of the rings and um uh the district nine and some other uh, lots of big movies there the world of warcraft one as well Power um, Rangers. What's that? Power Rangers as well. Uh, Power Rangers, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I worked on the Power Rangers movie there. We were making the power suits. Um, it's an amazing process, sort of working with um, uh, actors that were in Los Angeles um, that were getting 3D scanned in Los Angeles and then having those 3D scans sent over to New Zealand for the costumes to then be produced in New Zealand and then sent over to Canada for filming. Um, you sort of meet all these wonderful people. You know, Scarlett Johansson said hi to me at one stage. <laughs> Probably highlight of my life right there oh, um, so yeah you do get like um uh a very wide berth of um uh, options after finishing NIDA we've had people go into architectural model making um doing uh large-scale um productions for you know sort of housing planning uh, for example uh, for architects uh, we've had people kind of get into teaching uh, I'm enjoying teaching at the moment here at NIDA and a fair few other places um, other people doing uh, installations for uh, public uh, spaces like Vivid is a particularly uh, notable one, uh, as well as, you know, people going into stop motion puppetry and I mean, all kinds of things, you know, the, the, the skills aren't just uh, arts related necessarily, it can be um, all over the shop. Um, so uh, we might start answering, answering some questions. I've seen a few pop up in the chat just here. So, um, uh, I might start asking uh, Indy and Courtney. So we've got one from Melissa, which is, um, did this course significantly increase your chances uh, of getting a job in the field? Um, how do you guys feel about that, uh, Indy? Um, yeah, like for me, I think when I started going straight into some of the theater stuff, absolutely, like 100%, it was a really good model for moving into that. And actually I have since heard and been employed based on the facts that I did the course. Like I've, I've heard employers say, oh, NIDA people, yeah, we like them. We, we know what they've done. Or there's actually like, because we've, uh, like the props course has got, in Sydney at least, like there's quite a base of like graduates who are significantly older, like 20 years older than me, and they're currently heading the prop shop or mm. something. And there's a little bit of nepotism in that sense that they know what you've done in the course and they kind of know that you have to have quite a work ethic to get through the course and like do it all and be on the other end of it. So I yeah. think from that perspective, definitely. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you do get exposed um, to uh, the sort of occasionally long hours and, and the sort of hard work ethic um, to make sure that you, you know, take a brief and, and get the get it finished um, by the due date. Um, and Connie, how did you find it? Did it help you? Um, um, I definitely think so, because I don't think I would have my job if I didn't do the NIDA course, because I got it off doing placement for NIDA. Right. Um, so it kind of transitions from there. And there's actually a couple uh, NIDA people there from like way back uh, working there at the moment. And mm. like one of them has been there for 13 years. Wow. Um, but also with that, like once you're kind of in the industry, everybody kind of knows everybody. So like other people just come in randomly and like pass NIDA students and everything. But I definitely think it helped. And um, the, the, the NIDA, the concept of NIDA, it's known within the industry. So if you go, I went to NIDA, people know what it is, so. Mm. Yeah, on Courtney's point, like it's a really good excuse to get into it like, <laughs> and be like, hi, I'm just a student at, you know, this place that you've heard of, like invite me in. And then like, I also got, 
I worked with both of the people. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, some other people that I did placement with as well. Like it's it's about getting to know people quickly and it gives you that excuse and being exposed to all of the materials and things early means that you're familiar with different things and then you kind of have a base level of understanding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the um, it's a it's a funny one because it sounds like quite a specific course. You know, thinking of studying <laughs> props, and then the second you get here, you suddenly realize that it's actually incredibly broad. You know, metalwork. Yeah. Um, Myla teaches metalwork. Uh, we both teach woodwork. You learn polymers. You learn mold making, models, sculpting, digital fabrications, three D printing, laser cutting. Um, and so it's actually like incredibly broad what you get out of it. Um, I reckon I reckon every year gets a different skill set, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A, a lot of it seems to come down to um, the people that you put in the room with as well. Yeah. You know, you, you, it's quite a small cohort of people, six people. Um, we do try and balance it out when we take the applicants um, so that we get a balance of uh, people that have like a lot of, uh, you know, maybe theater experience. And so they're very good with the um, theoretical knowledge of theater, uh, understanding sort of, portraying emotion on stage. Uh, you'll tend to have people that are very good um, technically, like amazing woodworkers, metal workers. Um, and that sort of, you know, again, they sort of balance each other out. You have someone very artistic, drawing, sculpting. Um, and so because of those people that you're in the room with, you kind of get this synergy, you know, three years in the room with that person, you sort of get uh, knowledge via osmosis. Uh, <laughs> even so um, even the the network at NIDA itself it it continues on afterwards because I've worked I worked with the director at NIDA and then I'll, after uni I've worked with her again like twice and you just you keep those relationships and then they'll can recommend you to other people because they know how you work and the way you work and it's yeah. a really good collaborative process yeah exactly a standard standard um skill set there I've just got a comp uh, question on um such competitive int uh, entry and limited numbers. What is the student retention like for this course, first through the third year? Yeah, um, look, we, we very rarely get um, dropouts generally. Most people that, that come here are um, very keen to be here initially. Um, you know, it, it's a competitive uh, entry with limited numbers, as, as you mentioned. Um, so people that come are, are generally very eager. Um, we have had one student defer recently. Um, I think we had one drop out the year before, but that was, most of those are due to sort of um, personal and family circumstances more than um, uh, anything to do with the, the course uh, exactly. So um, yeah, people generally come, they stay. Um, it's, a, it's a good time. Night is a very small school. I think the max, uh, the full school is maybe like 180 people or something in the, in the building, um, students. So you get to know everyone very well. Um, it's a, it's a big, you know, family for three years, um, and then after that as well. You get a props family when you when you, you get you, there. You get a props family. You get, <laughs> you, get a, you get an amazing Facebook group chat for the next few years. Um, oh God! All oh, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the memes, the memes. Um, so we've got some other questions. Uh, uh, I've got some hobby experience, uh, like a week actual professional experience. Max, what's the experience? Yeah. So I mean, when it comes down to prior experience here. Um, you know, we have people come from all walks of life. Um, uh, recently, it's, uh, a lot of people have done sort of um, high school design technology and art um, are the sort of uh, two uh, normal ones. But we've also had like people that have, you know, gone out into the end, like, uh, we had someone that went and did the architectural drafting, uh, for example, as, um, as a career for a few years, and they came back and they had only done, um, you know, like art as a, uh, as a hobby for, um, for a few years. Um, prior and they had, you know, that they showed an aptitude for making, building and learning, uh, we, we, which you could see in the portfolio as well as in their entrance exam. Um, and so that experience was more than sufficient to, uh, to get them in. Um, we do start people kind of at the, um, at the base level, we introduce you to the tools, um, to processes, to manufacturing techniques, and uh, you, you build up from there at a very fast rate. Um, so whatever experience you have is almost certainly more than sufficient um, so long as the, the quality of work's there. I mean, so Courtney, what have you done before, uh, before um, you applied to NIDA? Were you high school? Um, I don't remember. I did, uh, in high school, I did woodwork and art. So I'd done woodwork for like four years in high school. And then I was all keen to apply to NIDA and mum said no. So, um, cause I had to like, she's like, you need to like 
stay and save money and maybe do a TAFE course to like build a folio. So I got an advanced diploma in visual arts, I think it was. And that kind of gave me a nice folio foundation. And then, but I've, I didn't ha really have any industry experience because where I was didn't have any really. The yeah, theatre yeah. the happened after I left, so. <laughs> <laughs> you missed out by, by a little I did. <laughs> it's a shame. Um, and uh, Indy, what were you? Uh, what was your experience prior to NIDA? Yeah, well, I, I, I did actually come straight from high school. I think Marcelo was impressed because I got onto the 3D printing wagon really early. So Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I had a really <laughs> fortunate, um, I was able to weld and 3D print and like woodwork and all sorts at school. Mm. So I was really lucky. I had a good portfolio. Yeah. Uh, Indy was just abnormally talented at the time. Um, she really uh, was un unfairly, <laughs> unfairly talented. <laughs> abnormally talented. Yeah. Um, and uh, so how did you guys find your time at NIDA? Like um, in terms of like the hours and com commuting and things, were you both living close by um, to NIDA or were you sort of commuting a few hours to get in? Um, let's go Indy again. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, being like, a little baby uh work was fine because it was very like the same kind of hours I was doing to like high school so I I transitioned that way really easily but like I had to go through a significant independence learning curve of like learning to cook and clean and stuff <laughs> adulting you had to learn the adult I had to yeah. adult pretty hard and I google was my parent for a long time <laughs> so everything not related to NIDA was the challenge in, in yeah oh I mean NIDA, NIDA was a challenge I remember reading one of the first academic papers and just being like I don't understand this. <laughs> like uh, there wasn't too much of that so yeah, yeah. yeah and that I think that whole course has changed a lot actually the performance and ideas aspect mm, because because it's We'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment, actually. We'll go into the theory and stuff. But um, yeah, so uh, you, you did live locally and it was sort of... Uh, yeah, re really close. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was ages away, but it was actually not as far. Right, the <laughs> right. And Courtney, how about yourself? How did you find the um, sort of lifestyle of being at NIDA? Um, it was it was good. It's, um, it's definitely a, an intense experience. As we told the first years when I was in third year, that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So just mm. take your time that you're yeah. here for a while. It's, it's a, it's a big experience, but I lived, I lived just down the road with other props people. So that was, mm. you could kind of see, cause uh, one of them was a year above me. So you could kind of see yeah. what was going on. And I think it was good as well because we all understood cause we were all in the same kind of course and under the same, uni pressures and stuff because you'd hear people on the bus like oh I've got a 14 week contact hours at uni and I'm like 14 I've got like so many more than that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean the, the contact hours are for NIDA uh, I think we've got 40 hours um, is the face-to-face -face, um, contact hours here at NIDA so it's um, 9 a.m to 6 p.m um, five days a week um, the Saturday is an optional day, uh, but we are closed on Sundays um, just so people get a break and you have time to catch up on your theory work. Um, the, um, the, uh, the theory work is um, performance related. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of changes and flows um, year by year, um, depending on what's going on culturally uh, in, uh, in the arts. Um, but you will study uh, a theory subject uh, sort of introducing you to theatre throughout the throughout history uh, and then we sort of start uh, analysing different performances as well as uh, you know films uh, and other storytelling techniques um, through that uh, through that subject um, so basically every term you have it's a fairly light load for theory uh, it's usually about one essay or a video essay uh, each term um, roughly sort of a thousand to two thousand words um, is, is roughly uh, the the theory component there um, yeah, uh, anything else you'd like to bring up, um, either Courtney or Indy, um, on, your, on your time here at NIDA? Um, how did you find stepping through the years then the progression of, of moving through skills? Hmm. Do you have anything for me? I'll, I'll say something, but... Yeah, sure. No, you go, yeah. you go. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, first year, man, my, my memories are actually so hazy. I really remember the last two super well, but... I remember being it's all like, a blur. <laughs> yeah, at first I was like quite competitive and like trying to learn all these new things and being super overwhelmed and trying to learn and find my place. But then like 
second uh, it chilled out a lot but second year was like a big workload and I noticed that some of the people who had lives outside of NIDA they struggled a bit more because like their relationships were under a bit more strain I think um because they were spending so much time at NIDA that wasn't a problem for me since I'd moved here for the course yeah but um yeah so it's, yeah second year was a lot of studio work a lot of contact hours mm. and then third year we were just like kings of the castle it was so <laughs> incredibly easy the big room the big the big, the big, yeah, big but, room but it was also probably the most realistic to uh moving outside of NIDA was it was way more like that it was mm. in, even a step back from that mm. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I, I think I think there's a, there's a valid comment there. Um, so I've just been notified that we've only got a few minutes left. Um, just so uh, all you participants know, we're going to be doing a um a Q and A after this with um uh, myself, Myola, and uh, Marcelo just about this the course. If you want to join that um afterwards, um, if you've got any last questions for Courtney or Indy um about lifestyle at NIDA or any any experiences, now's the time to throw them in. We'll hopefully get over to them for the next few minutes. Um. Otherwise, um, I'd just like to say thank you to Courtney and Indy for joining us today. It's uh, so amazing to have um, uh, some alumni here to, to have a chat with um, our potential uh, candidates uh, at NIDA. So um, yeah, thank you guys, really appreciate it. Um, thank I'll you. Uh, see if uh, yeah. there's any more questions coming through. We've got some thank yous. Um, it was nice to go down memory lane when the slideshow is happening, Indy and I were like, oh, okay. I remember that. Oh, I know who did that. That was very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a red mask. Oh, oh yeah, what was with the bird mask? Yeah, who did that? Like raw. That was like that was actually from I remember when I was getting admitted to NIDA, I had to, we had to do a drawing uh test and um Oh I, I remember that. that. I, I drew that I drew that mask. So that must have mm. been the year before I got to NIDA, so twenty twelve or something like that, I guess. That was Sarah Pickup. Sarah Pickup. Ah, oh, uh, there you go. Oh I right. was I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, look, thank you all for joining us. Um, are we staying in this room to do the Q&A, Marcelo? Do you know? Is that um, Chris, I think we, we move in. Is we're Chris moving. there? Okay, cool. <laughs> we need the tech uh, people. <laughs> yes, yes, you are definitely moving. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, thank you, everyone, so much for coming. Um, we're moving into a different room for the Q&A. Uh, if you'd like to join, feel free to. Um, otherwise, um, best of luck with the application process. We'll see you all mm. later. Um, and please, Hi, and please have a look. Have a look to the to the um the POB page in in NIDA website as well. There's a lot more content as to you. You can explore the students' work. It's a lot of videos, uh, puppet shows, photographies, many things. I think that it will be inspiring. Thank you very much, right. Indy, Tony. Nice to see you, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> I'll, be back hope to, to see you soon. around. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Keep in contact, Indy too. Oh yeah, we'll do same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>